Hello and welcome to our special series, Viram Agenda Sustainability. I'm Akshita Nandakopal. SDG 15 is one of the United Nations 17 Sustainable Development Goals and it focuses on protecting ecosystems and biodiversity as well as preventing and reversing damage to them. Biodiversity essentially refers to the diversity and variability of life on Earth. If it's enormous, the number of species in the said environment will grow. If it's low, there will be only a few species with very little diversity. Scientists believe that there are approximately 8.7 million plant and animal species on Earth. However, only roughly 1.2 million species have been identified thus far, the majority of which are insects. This means that millions of live organisms still very much remain a mystery. It's true that man is the most evolved of all species. In the last 50 years, human population has doubled. It's important to note that as the human influence on the earth increases, inversely, the existence of flora and fauna decreases. Mobius Foundation's campaign, Viram Agenda Sustainability, in association with the India Today group, realizes the need for collective effort and commitment to take effective measures in this direction. In today's show, we'll talk about the imbalanced growth of human population and its damage to the biodiversity and how to compensate for it. Dasako pehle jaiv vividhita ki sadiyo purani jo kadi toot gai thi, vilupt ho gai thi. Aaj hume usse phir se jodne ka mauka mila hai. Aaj bharat ki dharti par cheetah lot aaye hai. Under Project Cheetah, PM Modi talked about connecting the link that was broken decades ago. But there are lacks of such links in our biodiversity due to which life exists on Earth. Microbes such as bacteria break down organic matter into nutrients which offer soil fertility, where it plants and crops, nutrition and medication for people and other species. These soil microbes contribute to our planet's biodiversity. Similarly, birds and pollinators, fish and marine creatures, and herbivorous and carnivorous animals including lions and tigers all contribute to our biodiversity, which benefits our ecosystem. Life on our planet exists because of all these species, and we, our home and our safety all are part of this biodiversity. Plants and oceans act as carbon sinks by absorbing carbon dioxide. Trees help reduce drought and flooding on the planet. Storms are repelled by coral reefs and mangroves. Nature holds a huge spiritual and cultural inheritance for humanity all across the world. Yet, man is set to ruin its biodiversity through all of his activities. Humans cut down forests for habitat, industry and all types of development, use hazardous fertilizers in agriculture, contribute to climate change and pollute the environment through other activities such as mining and hunting. All of this is having a negative impact on both land and marine life. Biodiversity is critical for ecosystem functioning. Human beings are part of biodiversity. If biodiversity is lost, the human beings also become extinct. According to the Intergovernmental Science Policy Platform on Biodiversity and Ecosystem Services study, 10 lakh animal and plant species are on the verge of extinction. Many species numbers have dropped dramatically between 1970 and 2018, according to the WWF's Living Planet Report. The population of animals living in rivers and reservoirs has declined by a whopping 83%. During 2016-17, more than half of the corals present in the Great Barrier Reef were destroyed due to which the sea temperature is rising. A research published in Current Biology suggests that due to the increase in temperature, the population of turtles 
present in the green sea is changing into predominantly female turtles. A new survey suggests that Thwaites, a component of Antarctic glacier known as Doomsday Glacier, is on the brink of melting. Imagine the devastation if the glacier the size of Gujarat melted. Now is not the time for talk and making plans. It's time to take action to compensate for the damage done to the biodiversity. Else, our future generations will not have food or other resources to help them live. If there's a loss of biodiversity, you find there's increase in the transmission of zoonotic diseases from animals to the human beings, like COVID-19. At the COP15 meeting in Montreal, India, one of 190 countries to have signed onto an agreement to stop and reverse biodiversity loss, asked for a dedicated budget for biodiversity conservation. The LIFE mission was started with the goal of conserving 30% of the world's biodiversity by 2030. We all acknowledge the credible action is the source of strength and optimism in facing all global challenges, including biodiversity. We are forging ahead in our efforts. Our forest and tree cover is steadily rising together with our wildlife population. I reiterate that what is needed today is mindful and deliberate utilization instead of mindless and destructive consumption. Efforts are being undertaken at all levels, but it's also true that rising temperatures and climate change are hurting our biodiversity as a result of increasing human consumption and quite simply greed. Every degree Celsius increase in temperature increases the loss of wildlife and this impacts us and all the species. According to WWF India's 2022 report, in the last 50 years, there has been a decline in the population of 17 species of bees and turtles in the country. According to the report, the Himalayan area and the Western Ghats are two of the country's biggest hotspots where biodiversity loss is predicted to accelerate as temperatures rise. The International Union for Conservation of Nature monitors 1,212 animal species in India, with 12% or 148 species facing extinction. There are 69 mammals, 23 reptiles and 56 amphibians among the 148. Mangrove extraction in India continues at a pace of 0.13% every year. Sundarbans mangroves, which protect coastal areas from storms, have lost 137 kilometers since 1985. Clean, tranquil streams are a natural supply of habitats for all living things. But only 37% of the remaining rivers are more than 1,000 kilometers long and free-flowing. The rest of India's rivers are contaminated and the existence of animals and animals that form the ecosystems is hanging in the balance. Nature is the foundation of life's continuation. The most essential relationships in natural diversity are wildlife and plants. Understand that the collapse of ecosystem is near if the individual species and populations continue to dwindle. The environment continues to be plundered and destroyed and these species continue to become extinct. But can we let this happen? Never. As a result, India has seen initiatives like Project Cheetah, Project Tiger, Project Elephant and the conservation of one-horned rhinos and lions. It took a decade for Delhi to become a new home for sparrows. But they have continued to chirp here since the establishment of Goraya Gram in Gadi Mandu village. Efforts have also been made at the private level. In 2017-18, Mumbai-based lawyer and activist Afro Shah, along with local fishermen, removed 4,500 tons of garbage from Varsova Beach. Over 127 weeks of their hard work made possible the return of turtles to Mumbai's coastline after 20 years. This cleanup is one part of this work. In the world, the UN SDGs have different goals. There is also life under water. So, in the plastic that is going to the sea, the lakes, the rivers, 
ये बहुत बड़ा प्रॉब्लम क्रिएट किया है चेक्स फाड़ना बहुत आसान है लोगों के लिए लोग बोलते हैं मैं पुण्य का काम करूँगा या आई विल हेल्प मदर नेचर आई विल हेल्प आई टे चेक्स एज द इजिएस्ट थिंग टू डू बट टू गेट इन्वॉल्व बाई गिविंग योर एफर्ट एंड योर टाइम इज वॉट इज रिक्वायर्ड सिमिलरली Ganesh Rajpurohit has built an 11-story bird apartment for birds in Tuliasar village of Sri Dungargarh in Bikaner. This has an arrangement of feeding, resting and bathing for 1100 birds at a time. They believe that birds also have the right to live like humans. Hum ghail kabooton ko ghar leke aate the, unka sarankshan karte the. Phir dimag mein aayi ki hum yahan par kyon nahi yahi pe sarankshan kiya jaye inka sabka? Kam se kam 8000 kabootar yahan par nivas karenge. It is clear that the protection and expansion of wildlife and their natural environment should be at the center of our socio-economic development plans. Only then will we be able to progress on the path of sustainable development. It's time now for a break. When we return, we'll talk about measures to compensate for the loss of biodiversity. You're watching Viram Agenda Sustainability, where we're currently discussing biodiversity loss and the compensation for it. It's time to learn how to actually repair the damage done to flora and to wildlife. We have with us some well-known experts. We're joined by Dr. Vai V. Jhala, a scientist and conservationist, Vivek Menon, the Executive Director of the Wildlife Trust of India, and Mr. Praveen Garg, advisor of the Mobius Foundation. Welcome. Thank you all for joining us on our show. Mr. Praveen Garg, I'd like to start with you. We would want to know how really you see the relationship uh, between human overpopulation and biodiversity destruction. You see, uh, recently India has become the most populated country with 140 crore people and the land mass is only 2.4% of the world. So there's a huge pressure on the natural resources, on the land, on the forest, and different species of plants and animals. And as recently has been pointed out by the Intergovernmental Science Forum on Biodiversity and Ecosystem Services, one million species of plants and animals are at the risk of extinction. So it is the sheer population, and especially in case of India, we are the population per kilometer is very high. So it's resulting in destruction of the uh, biodiversity. Mr. Jhala, it's said that overpopulation and human greed are the two biggest enemies of biodiversity. What would you say? Would you agree with that? I think it's absolutely right. I think both are very important. A, in this era of the Anthropocene, the effect of humans on the planet, the scientists have given it a name as well, the Anthropocene. It started around 40,000 years ago when humans discovered fire. Till that point in time, when the species evolved about 2 million years ago, we lived in harmony with nature like any other species. But after we discovered fire, we started changing the environment, the habitat, for making it more suitable for ourselves and less and less suitable for our conspecific species. Extinction crisis came up. We are in the middle of the sixth mass extinction. Just like what happened 65 million years ago, when the dinosaurs became extinct on the planet due to the cause of a meteorite strike, today the humans are the meteorite strike on this planet. And we are causing the loss of species of about 100 to 150 species per day. This is an unacceptable rate and we need to change our ways of how we deal with the planet. Population expansion has been the major cause. After the discovery of fire, the human population escalated and it is going, growing at an exponential rate. Mr. Menon, coming to you, we're discussing the success of Project Cheetah, how cheetahs became extinct in our country and whether the conditions are currently ideal for cheetahs to be brought back. This is important because we've seen a third cheetah perish in the last 40 days. Your thoughts particularly on that? The, the loss of one cheetah or two cheetahs does not make a damn difference. The uh, success or failure of Project Cheetah will be determined in the next 10 to 15 years. It's a long-term project. India has committed to this project and it depends on a number of things including number one, 
bringing in enough number of cheetahs over the years from the southern African populations. Number two, securing the habitat, not just Kuno, but other habitats and ensuring that there is enough movement of these animals in a proper planned scientific manner to newer habitats. And number three, ensuring that the prey base in all these habitats are uh, good and safe for the cheetah to come back. So it is scientifically a very valid project uh, which has been attempted and all kudos to the government for attempting it. Having said that, it is not an easy project and if uh, we worry about one cheetah dying or one cheetah or, or celebrate even one cheetah being born, then we are looking at it in a very, very short perspective. Conservation is done over decades. Uh, cheetah is the only large mammal that India has lost since independence. In fact, we lost it even before independence, uh, uh, in the last hundred years you could say. But uh, we are so happy that there is at least a potential of bringing this back to this country. Thank you very much for joining us here on this broadcast. On the global front, India's stance is clear that affluent countries should play a larger role in compensating for biodiversity loss and that each country should be allowed to set its own targets based on its own circumstances. It's obvious that the government and many other organizations are making efforts on their respective levels. But it's time for us now to join this fight. What can we do about it? Well, we can remember the four R's. Reduce, reuse, recycle and regenerate. We have to embrace and play our role and that means limit resource use, get used to reusing our resources, emphasize on recycling and collaborate in resource regeneration. I hope we can all adopt these steps simply because it's now a matter of our survival. That's all we have time for today. This is Viram Agenda Sustainability. We'll see you again when we continue to ask the important questions. Till then, take care. Keep watching India today. Have a great day ahead.